So God wants us to come to church so we can hear rebuke, instruction, our faith built up. We keep sharp. We keep corrected. There was a movie I watched many years ago, Quo Vadis. Quo Vadis. Whoever saw it. The rest of you. <laughs> okay. It was about Nero, really. And Nero thought he was a god and did so many things and, you know, killed Christians and blamed them. He burnt Rome and killed Christians and said, accused the Christians of being the ones who burnt Rome. Or he accused them of being the ones that burnt Rome and killed uh, because, they, because they, he was accusing brethren that we said that God would destroy the world with fire. So we're the ones who started the fire. So that God, was some crazy stuff like that. So he had this general. He was a captain of the host of his host, a general who became a general or something. And the guy, his name was Marcus. And Marcus had an attendant by his side. And he told this attendant, whenever I'm being recognized or glorified, whisper to my ears, remember that thou art only a man. So he would be, you know, when he had conquered for Rome, he was coming back and the Caesar was trying to, you know, uh, uh, speak, you know, spoke so many things about him, you know, praised him, talked about him. So his head was getting swollen. Then his, uh, his, his orderly or his attendant said, remember that thou art only a man. Then his head dropped. <laughs> he continued where he was going. Now, that is what you come to church for. So that you can your heart will not be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. So that you don't get carried away. So that your faith can be built up. There was a minister way back in those days, I, I had a story. He was always calling this brother. He said, brother, where are you? He said, I'm busy, pastor. I'm busy, pastor. I'm busy, pastor. He was making money. This, this brother was making a lot of money. And his pastor will always call him. Where are you? He said, Pastor, you know I'm busy. I have this meeting. I have this, that, 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 that. And he kept going. Until a disease struck him. When the disease struck him, he was given a short time to leave. Then he started coming to church. He was no longer busy. The problem now is there are people who have heard the word of faith for so many years whilst you were busy making money. You are an expert in making money. And when your faith should have kicked in, you didn't have it. Brethren, pray. Brethren, pray. Now, if half of the people were like you, will they come for the prayer meeting for your life? I have said it. We can do what you can do. Pastor, I want to see you. I'm busy. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs> See, but he said I'm going to die. <laughs> I was not seeing you before. I'm not your pastor. You don't understand? Bible says, bear ye one another's burden, so fulfill the law of Christ. He also says, let every man bear his own burden. There is a spiritual burden that you will carry by yourself. Do you know there comes a time where God expects you to have grown if you don't grow, if other people exercise faith for you, it will not work. I'm telling you. We all have a responsibility in this kingdom. And women, be very careful. 
If you marry a man who was zealous for God and they marry you, and from the day they married you, the man stops being zealous for God. Something is wrong with you. Unless an angel strike you, you better put yourself together. God forbid it happens to anybody here. You don't know that that's why some people are sick. Because when the enemy comes and attacks them, they have, there's nothing, nothing. All they have are stories. All the movies they've watched, different things, different, different things, nothing to defend them, nothing. Nothing. You can't say, devil, I resist you in the name of Jesus. I bind you. Get out of this place. You can't. It's not inside you. You don't even know what that is. When will I tell you, um, uh, say, I take authority over the devil. You, you say, hey, pastor, pray for me. Just, just pray for me. You know, they start praying useless prayers like, God, help my own belief. I believe, help my own belief. The person who was saying that thing was not born again. The cure for unbelief is to hear what? The word of God. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. And the responsibility to hear is yours. Not, I'm a Christian. Forget about the fact that I'm a pastor, I'm a Christian. I have a responsibility to God to pray for, to, to him. If you play with it, when the time comes, you will carry it. One of the things that a person who does not have faith has at his doorstep is fear. His biggest enemy is fear. And the cure for fear is faith and love. And if you were not busy among brethren, how are you exercising the love of God? How are you exercising the love of God? How do you see brethren who have need that you have to meet? If you're too busy alone by yourself. How? And faith walketh by love. Everybody's quiet. I don't know what I said that need to be quiet. But you need to be serious. Serious with him and yourself for your own good. Not for me. For you. If I come here as I'm supposed to come and share the word as I'm supposed to do it, I would have done my job. The work of the ministry you see the pastors that are here, we, we pray, you know, um, um, we, we, we fast, we pray, we do the things we're supposed to do and all of that. Share the word with you and all of that. When we finish, you just go home. Your Bible is, is a Sunday, Sunday medicine. You just, when you get home, you just dump it on top of the table and walk away. Next Sunday, if you're going to come that Sunday, if you just wake up and it looks as if one of the boats somewhere was not very loo was loose. You just say, ah, today is not for the, that church thing. Go, go, go. Tell them that. Tell them anything. Tell them that I went to work or something. You know, just tell, if they ask. Because here we'll ask you. You know why we're asking you? It's not because we're busy bodies. God requires us to ask you. To ask for you. And we love you. 
We want the best for you. You see, I'm not one of those pastors, or we in this ministry are not the kind of pastors who want you to be coming to us every day. Pastor, you know, leg A is not right, so let's pray. We pray for you so that we become the macho men of the house. No, we're here. It's a DIY thing. Do it yourself. Here, we teach you to pray, to be built strong. If the devil comes, you rebuke him. If it gets too much, you come. We join your, our faith with your faith, right? But know that you're not carrying anything out. Don't think, you notice know, it's coming from your side. You know, if there's a tug of war, you know, and people are pulling, and you were not pulling anything for us to come and now grab the head of the rope, they would have pulled us across the line before, pulled you across the line before we get there. And the bad thing about it is that we can be believing for you and you are not believing. And you're the key person there. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say this to you. As some of you were here, we're praying that you recover and all of that, and you are just talking, or you, you are just saying, ah, the way the, you're not telling one of your friends on the phone because you're carnal. You're telling one of your friends on the phone, say this thing, you know, they said it was going to kill the, 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 the meal. I don't know what I'm going to do now. You know, where they are praying for me. Who, who is praying for you? You have annulled all the things we're doing. You're fighting us. Or we're declaring here that you be rich, that God has blessed. He said, we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. For though that he was rich for your sakes, he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich, that you're rich. He said, don't mind them. All these people preaching prosperity, you know. Don't mind them. They think that uh, the kingdom of God is this, that, 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 that. You're, you're attacking yourself, not us. You know why? Except you agree with God. God cannot do what he wants to do in your life. In our lives. He can't do it. Except we agree with him. There were people, I was standing with them in faith. Praying, I will pray. We will pray and all of that. The person was telling somebody else on the phone. If you don't know what to say, just keep quiet. Be neutral. That was why Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, God struck him with dumbness. The angel struck him with dumbness until John was born because the man was carnal. He would just be talking, you know, nobody, might, you know, how will that happen? This, that, the, 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 the angel just said, I, I can't teach you the message of faith now. Boom. And the guy, when they called him, said, hmm? <laughs> He could not declare his unbelief. As long as he couldn't declare it, what God wanted to do, God did it. Some of you need to just be neutral. If you don't believe, just say, mm. <laughs> when they're asking you. <laughs> yeah. And let us bulldoze through. But when you are standing against us, Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed That's the purpose of church. That we be of the same mind. That we walk together. You see, when one person is praying, one person can make a difference. Make no mistakes about it. All that you see here, everything on this side is a miracle. Including my children. They're all, they're all miracles. Everybody sitting here is a miracle. This, in fact, the thing I'm, I'm standing in a miracle because it was once me, just me, praying in the Holy Ghost. So every other thing that came, came by it. Don't let these suits fool you. We pray. We're rugged. When it comes to prayer, we pray. We pray. In this church, we pray. And we'll continue to pray. And there'll be more opportunities to pray. I'm saying it so when we tell you, come for prayer meeting, you don't say you're busy. If you're busy, you are busy for yourself. Now, you have work to go, fine. The day you're not at work, 
be here. Not that, you know, the day you're not so at not at work, you're somewhere, and maybe we're driving by, we now see you dodge, you know, like. You know. I love the Bible. You know, see, God is not mocked. <laughs> He's not mocked. <laughs> he said, be doers of the word, not hearers only. Deceiving who? Me? No. Deceiving your brother? No. Yourself. Yourself. Because let me tell you this thing. The more you pray, you're not sowing seed just to other people. You're building something into your human spirit. Without which, in the day of trouble, the Bible says if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Can I say something to you? When trouble strikes, that's, I'm at my best. So if sometimes in my life now, when there's no trouble, I create trouble for the devil. In my house, I create me joy, mayhem for him. When I, when I cause the trouble, he will come. Then I say, okay, fine, let's fight because when things are too easy, you will not understand. Do you get what I'm saying? America is a very big place. So when I'm reading and they say somebody is causing trouble, so I say, okay, ah, this is my guy. Then we, we are. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm used to it. I, I'm in an environment of, of <laughs> one of the worst things any human being can do is to touch my family. or come among my brethren, we will deal with it. We will deal with it. Make no mistakes. We're not boasting. The Bible says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We're not playing. I, I met a man of God once. He said something that tripped me. God was speaking my language. He said, they are walking, and we're walking. I Bishop Duncan Williams. I was in his office. He was talking. He said, they are busy, and we're busy. They're walking, and we're walking. That's a Christian that is, and he's always ready. Jacob said to his son Esau, I have given the blessing to Jacob. He said, but when you become restive, you would break his yoke. A translation said, you would tear his yoke from your neck. When a Christian bows the knee, let that, what is that yoke? What is that yoke? It has not been created yet. The Bible says that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. He said, the burden removed. Don't become a CC. CCs, the Bible says, strong men maintain or retain riches. You don't become a CC in the kingdom. Whether you're a man or a woman, be nice. Live your life with other believers and all of that. When it comes to the enemy, be fierce. Do you understand? Amen? And you can't be all that staying in your house, staying in your home. You become weak and lazy and hear and fill yourself with a lot of negative things because the enemy will keep talking to you. All the TV you are watching, all those things you are watching are talking to you. The ads that are coming. You know, was when I came to America, I had designer diseases. <laughs> they would be calling them, you know, and the medicine, designer medicine also. In fact, if Gucci was designing medicine, he wouldn't design as good as some of the, the stuff they've got. And after they've told you one small thing that it would do, they line it up with a thousand things that can kill you. And people are still taking it. But do you know what he's doing to you? He's sowing something to you. Is showing a perverted solution. What do I mean? It's calling the disease. It's showing it to you. And the people are so proud of the disease. How can God deliver a man who says he has 
my, my. You have signed for it, it's yours. See, if you believe with your heart and declare with your mouth, you have what you say. So, if the man says he has uh, uh, one of these, I, I, the diseases I've never had in my life, I had when I came here. And everything is a disease now, they medicate it. If your child stands in a place too long, they give him medicine to drink. You know, it's amazing. Exercise your faith. Exercise your faith. There are things you would take, okay, vitamin supplements and all of that, you know, do exercise and, and the stuff that you need to do and all that, drink water, you know, and all of that, you know, fine. But to start, you know, keep your faith under. Jesus did something. And I said, it's important that we be in church. He did something. And I'm going to read that and we'll close in a little bit. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. From the book of Luke, chapter 22. No, chapter 8, verse 22. It says, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship and with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. And as they sailed, he fell asleep. Who fell asleep? Praise the Lord. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they seized and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith. Where is your faith? Now, faith cometh how? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you don't hear except there be a preacher. If you're at home, you're not hearing the preacher or at least a brother who will encourage you with the word. And when you announce, and if it has become a habit, and you're not there, when the time comes for you to, when he said, where is your faith? He expected that they would pick up their faith when trouble came and deploy it. Now, he who doesn't have what to deploy is open to the attack of the adversary. The Bible said, lifting the shield of faith with which you're able to quench some of the wiles? No. All the wiles, the attacks, the fiery darts, the weaponry of the enemy, you're able to quench it. He sends missiles against you. You're able to quench it with your faith. And how does that faith come? By hearing. By hearing. By hearing. By continuing to hear. Not having heard. You continue to hear, and your faith continues to grow. I will live long, and I will live strong. Hallelujah. Land of days belong to me. They shall not cast their young, nor be barren in the land. Where is it coming from? The word. And your hearing is going into your ears. Instead of hearing, this is this disease, and, and you have it, but you can control it with this medicine, and this medicine will, you know, after you take it, the side effects uh, your neck can fall off, your legs can be broken and all of that. You know, I mean, you don't need that. If your faith is built strong, when the storms of life come, 
You, 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 you deploy your faith and the storm will calm down. <laughs>